Hey guys, I'm Danny, a friendly neighborhood colorist, and what you just saw was only using the film look creator in the Vinci Resolve 19. So that goes to show you how easy it is to achieve a filmic kind of look using this new effect, which I will show you right now. So jumping into the Resolve page, you can find the film look creator effect under your Resolve FX film emulation under the effects palette here, and you can drag it onto a node. So in this tutorial, I'm not going to do any color management using a CST. I'm going to do everything within one single film look creator node. That's why for my input color space, I'm going to choose Sony S-Log3. So Sony s Gamma 3 Cine and Sony S-Log3. Then for output color space, I'm going to use Rexel 09. And then I'm going to output to Gamma 2.4. Right, so now that we have our color management done, we can jump into our color settings and start to make adjustments. We can add a bit of contrast. And I'm also going to dim down my highlights a bit. So the more you dim down your highlights, the more kind of filmic it looks because sometimes when you overexpose on film, the highlights will be very suppressed. But if you raise it up, your highlights will look sharper with more detail. So depending on what kind of look you want to achieve, for me, I want to achieve a very authentic film look. So I'm going to suppress my highlights a little bit from its original 0 0.75. Let's go down to 0 0.5, right? So I'm going to fully suppress all my highlights. And for this fade, it's going to give you a very nice fade towards the shadow, which I kind of like. So I'm going to just add a little bit onto it. So let's go 0 0.1 around there. And for white balance, we can either push a cooler tone. So this white balance is very photochemical accurate. You can see that it doesn't give the same results as the temperature and tint slider over here. So let's go a little bit warmer for this clip maybe. We can get this very like Kodak goldish kind of look. And as for tint, let's move it around. I kind of like how it reacts when I go towards the magenta side, which is adding to the tint. And for skin bias, I'm not going to make any adjustment because we don't have any skin in this, uh, in this clip yet. For subtractive saturation, let's push that up. And yes, a more saturated look kind of fits the whole vibe of this uh, scene for richness, which is uh, saturation in the more saturated area. So it creates the illusion of more saturation. It looks saturated, but it won't go over saturated. So if I push up my richness slider all the way up, you can see that the saturated areas become more saturated, but the ones without any saturation, it will stay its own level. So I guess we can add a little bit, maybe 1.2, something like that to add a bit of richness. For bleach bypass, this is, it doesn't suit this clip, so I'm not going to use it. It's going to desaturate and add more contrast to your clip. So that's about all the adjustment that I want to make over here. So let's move on to split tone. So to enable your split tone, you have to check this box and it doesn't have any effect by default. So you have to add the amount in order to add the split tone effect. So it adds a bit of orange, reddish orange in the highlights and a bit of tealish blues in the shadow regions only. So it has this very nice effect, which is split tone using complementary colors. And you can also adjust the hue angle to go more bluish. So this looks pretty vintage actually, but I'm going to go with the more traditional teal and orange kind of split tone, all right? And for pivot, we can actually move it more towards the orange side or more towards the blue side. I'm going to leave it around 0.3. So let's see a default. Oh, the default is already 0.3. So let's just leave it at that. For vignette, halation, bloom. So everything is turned on by default if you're selecting the 65 millimeter preset. So for vignette, I'm just going to leave it as it is. If I turn it on and off, you can see that on the edges, it just gives a little bit of the vignette effect. And as for halation, let's turn this on and off. You can see that there is a tiny bit of halation in this highlight area over here. 
but let's bump that up a bit for the amount i'm gonna bump it up let's go to 0 0.4 let's say and for radius i'm pretty happy with the default radius which is four and for bloom let's see if this is favorable or not by turning it on and off so it's not giving much of it of an effect so i'll just leave it at its default settings so next moving on to grain if i turn it on and off it's a very light grain which is almost unnoticeable so let's bump that up by a bit by going into the amount and increasing it you can also use the presets over here let's try a 60 millimeter and let's play that back you can see that it's pretty nice natural grain but one thing that i don't really like about grain is that if it looks too sharp so with this softness slider over here i can reduce the sharpness to make the grain more believable so if i move it i increase the softness i can get a softer grain so by default is 0 0.1 let's bump it up to 0 0.25 and let's check again Okay, I think we can do 0 0.35 and we get this softer natural green without if you notice from uh, like real vintage film the green is very soft because the green is on the sensor itself instead of in the environment so if it's so close to the sensor the green is naturally blur a bit so moving on to our flicker we can just enable it and i think it's pretty good where it is already we don't have to do any adjustment and gate width is for when the film is not held steadily during the film scanning process so adding a little bit of the gate width which is sort of like a shakiness does add to the believability the authenticity of this shot on film look and lastly we also have a film gate so if you want to go more stylish with it you can go for 35 millimeter so this adds this uh, frame for you the film gate or film mat and it looks pretty nice so lastly we have global blend which is to blend the effect and yeah you don't really need to use this effect because it removes the color management also so it's not very good to use this so with just a few settings i get a pretty nice film look i must say so if i compare it with the rec 709 let's turn on our selected steel grades let's compare this with a rec 709 you can see that this is very clean everything looks very pristine very digital and we can mimic a film look very quickly just by using one note which is the film look creator and if my settings are good i can easily apply it to all my other clips like this middle mouse click replace grid and i get a full collection of very nice looks that was almost as if it was shot on film right right so we have some pretty nice looks here for these with the skin maybe we want to tone down on the saturation and the richness a bit so that we can preserve the skin tones something like this or i also have another preset that i've made using the film look creator yes this is another type of look so if i go back and forth this is a warmer look and you can also push the split tone a bit more for this cooler tones in the shadows so it's very versatile and very useful if i copy over this one you get more blues in the shadows so everything that you see here is only using the film look creator i'm not using any other primary secondaries or anything so i guess that's all for this video so i hope this is a pretty quick tutorial for the film look creator and you can also very easily achieve this sort of authentic shot on film looks in DaVinci Resolve. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.